Hi friends, Father Scott again. I've, uh, I'm back after a bit of a hiatus and I will uh, begin to uh, make these uh, little reflections again uh, on weekdays on a regular basis now. So it's good to be back with you. Looking at our gospel reading for today, we see that uh, Jesus uh, is in his hometown and he goes into the synagogue, as he's used to doing, and uh, he, is, uh, he reads from the uh, book of Isaiah. And the passage that he reads is one that's very well received by the people there in Nazareth. He reads from Isaiah, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, and to proclaim a year acceptable to the Lord. Well, as I said, the, this uh, proclamation is very well received. And when Jesus says, today this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing, well, the people uh, are thrilled. This is one of ours. And he has come to proclaim uh, the restoration of Israel, the healing of the sick and the freeing of the oppressed. And they say to, uh, and they think to themselves, hey, wait, this is one of us. Now do what you did for others in places like Capernaum. Do it here. Do it for us. We're your hometown folks. But then Jesus does something that... Um, is not quite so popular with his hometown folks in Nazareth. He says that, uh, Amen, I say to you, a prophet, no prophet is accepted in his own native place. And then he says, There were many widows in Israel in the days of Elijah when the sky was closed for three and a half years and a severe famine spread over the entire land. It was to none of these that Elijah, the great prophet, was sent but only to a widow in Zarephath in the land of Sidon. Again, there were many lepers in Israel during the time of Elisha the prophet, yet not one of them was cleansed, but only Naaman the Syrian. Jesus takes this promise that was made to Israel, and he expands the scope of it. He uh, refuses to simply be the hometown hero. But he invites the people in the synagogue there in Nazareth to have their own vision of what the salvation of God looks like expanded to not just include Israel, but to include the whole world. They're not real thrilled about that. But that's how God's love always is. God's love is always expanding out, moving out, looking for new people to be included in the promises to receive the love of God. That's the way it's always been. That's the, the message that the prophets have always brought, going all the way back to Abraham. When God makes his covenant with Abraham, he says to Abraham, I will bless you and you will be a blessing for the whole world. And also in the prophet Isaiah, God says, my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. God's love is always moving out. God's love is always moving to include more and more people, to bring more and more people into the family of God, to be seated at the table of God, May God help us to have that same expansive vision of charity for the world. The same expansive vision that has reached out and included us. May that same spirit fill us so that we are always reaching out and inviting others to come into the love of God. God bless you, and I'll be talking to you again soon.